real quick before we get into this video does it annoy anybody else that the docs and this are mixed up like when it's displayed and it annoys a, my OCD like crazy? Like my Voclus is the first one left to right. But over here, it's at the end, right to left, and then Hijack Legionary comes next, and that's in dock two, but that so that would be over here, and then, well, there's a Centurion. I don't know, random scopely, that bugs the mess out of me. Why are the docs out of order from left to right on the display? Eh, Roll video, it's time to help out the 20s. Fancy intro music, yeah! Woo! So what I want to do in today's video is go over basic officer loadouts for a lot of players in the 20s. And, and what I'm getting asked a lot is there's so many new servers in the game, so many new players in the game, that you have all of these ships that they want to crew out and a lot of my older videos go over some older crews and while some of those still work they want some updated so we're going to give you that now if you're a player that's in the 30s or even 40s some of this still might apply to you in terms of learning how some of the crews work and everything so don't turn that dial stay right on this station and watch this channel and every video following to the rest of your days and never leave just stay here and watch videos merry christmas so let's start with a voclis on the left side of my screen now the one that I have, I actually had to build just for this video, but I use the Voclas as a PvE boat. You can use it actually semi-decently for PvP, and for those who have followed my level 26 account on my server 43, then you've seen me use it quite a lot over there. But it's going to be a great hostile grinder using Pike, Moreau, Talon. If you don't have Pike, Moreau, Talon, you can do Cadet Uhura, Cadet McCoy, Talon. If you don't, if you've got Moreau but not Pike, then you can do Blue Bones, Moreau, Talon. Either way, it's mostly a hostile grinding ship, and that's kind of the focus. If you want to go for a PvP focus, it depends on your level. If you're level 22, you're actually looking at the cadets being not a bad option. And if you scroll all the way over to your cadets, you're looking at Cadet Kirk for that. You're looking at Instructor Spock. Getting these cadets to a high level, they actually do have a pretty decent effect in PvP. You see, Instructor Spot increasing the weapons damage by 5% doesn't help that much, but the Kobayashi Maru is not a bad little mitigation changer for early game, which is one of the first cards you actually get that does any type of mitigation change. Even if it's not a lot, you know, early game, not a lot of people have things like 300% officer bonuses and everything, so the smaller percentages can have an effect. And then you look at, like, Captain Kirk, whose ability is actually really good for what we were just talking about, Spock, which is increases the attack defense and health of all officers on the bridge by 8%. Once again, that's just a bridge ability, not as good as some of these later ones, but still. And then a weapons damage of 20%. So cadets can rock you there and it be okay. But specifically, I want to hit on real quick ships to skip. Skip the Kira, skip the D3, the Mayflower, the Legionary, and the, um, yeah, that's it. Kira, D3, Mayflower, Legionary. And then just go straight to the level 28 ships. You want to get the Discovery. You want to get the Vidar 25. All those. And the Kamar you can even work on. But we'll just uh, keep on moving through that. Now I've got a hijacked Legionary here. Just to show you what a tier 6 Legionary looks like. The hijacked and the regular Legionary are the exact same battle strength. Now you do lose some of the faction bonuses and everything. You don't get those with the hijacks. And you also can never recycle this thing. So if you get it, remember it's only for Lux. But in terms of a basic crew loadout for low levels, I've done this one. You can get Nero relatively low because he is a faction officer. And if you're doing the dual faction grinding, I recommend you probably are going Romulan fed and you're picked up Nero. Kumak is captain because of his captain's ability, which is at the beginning of each round, increases the stats of all officers by 10%. And then Ash Tyler, which has become a very easy card to get even at basic levels at the start of each round. Ash Tyler increases the damage of the ship by 50% of the total attack, which for me, at tier 6, is over 3,000 extra to my weapons damage. And where that adds on directly, just to remind everybody, if I go into the weapons right here, click this, so that'd be 3,000 on top of this. So we'd be doing almost 9,000 damage here and over 10,000 max. So that would be a very nice little boost for this ship. Anyway, remember though, Ash Tyler is not going to work every round with Nero because Nero. The way he works is really stupid. And that's just all there is to that on Nero. Also, we'll talk about the Vidar real quick, but more specifically, Borg officers. Because this has also become something very common. A lot of people in the lower levels now have access to Borg officers where higher levels never got to. And this crew right here can be one of the most OP loadouts 
if you are a newer player. And actually, I'm going to, just for sake, we're going to do that. So we got a bonus to health, very useful. We have a bonus to defense, which is meh, useful. And then we have this one, increase the dodge, uh, armor, and shield deflection by 200% of the total health of all the officers on the ship, and that's where 7 of 10 comes in. So if you manage to get this, this Borg crew in the 20s is probably one of the best PvP loadouts you can run. That's only because people have access to these officers. When I had my first Voclis and everything, these didn't exist. So this adds another dynamic. So you're getting a mitigation run. The best mitigation run you can really run in the 20s without somehow getting a ton of lucky pulls on Zao is 5 of 10. And then pairing that with the health bonus right there, the stats of the officer growth. And because you're getting to levels with these officers that you don't normally get here. Now, we'll also add that if you have a good one, you can take this card off where you only want to run one synergy. So let's just say you don't have Decius, board Decius. You've got five of 10, but you full synergy is actually not going to help you that much there. A thousand percent, you're already above the mitigation caps. You're not getting anything extra. But if you take that off and then go and find a card such as Decius or Khan, so there's Khan there, but let's say, because we're focused on 20s, let's focus on lower level cards. Uh, look at Decius. You can put Decius here, and now you're getting a damage growth and you're doing mitigation as well as a health boost, this is a very, very dangerous PvP loadout if you're in the 20s because not a lot of ships can handle a, a, such a drastic change in mitigation that 5 of 10 could provide, and also not a lot of things in the game at this level can handle even a damage boost. So you, you start manipulating these stats right here and make a big change in the game. We'll discard all those, and now we'll look at like the Centurion. Centurion, I still like a basic look of maxed morale but odds are you don't have it. And when I say max morale, I'm talking about a level five Kirk and a level five Spock with Bones as captain. Remember, I did a video called Max Morale and the true math behind it, which means basically you get a thousand percent shield regeneration with Spock, but that's only if it's max. More likely you're sitting in the 20s with a Spock around rank three. If you've you know, gone with my advice, you should be around rank three by the time you hit level 28. That's not enough to run a max morale crew, but it is still enough to run morale and make some slight changes. For example, something as simple as adding Yuki as captain will help change the game for you because you get the shield strip disrupting field decrease of the shield health of the opponent ship by 10% each round. That is a flat strip. That's not like a base or anything. That is a flat 10% of the shield every single time starts disappearing from your opponent. So very quickly you start getting through that shield. Once you're done with that shield, you can now do some extreme damage. You can also change this and run and say if you have a decent Marcus at your level. Mine's only 400%, which is not that bad for the 20s, but you want it 800, 1600%. So you put him there, and now you put Decius over here. Running Yuki, Yuki Marcus Decius is another common loadout that you even find as you progress higher in the levels in this game. And because I'm having you skip some of these other ships, like the Legionary and everything, you can use those credits you're saving to buy officers. I want to use this as an opportunity to remind you that I recommend until level 24, even up to level 26, you're spending all of your faction credits on recruit tokens. You want to get that Spock Max as quickly as possible because it Max Morale is a very, very good crew in this game, even with some of the new ones coming out where Vimit has been buffed and he's now better at shield tripping him, and where you have Burnham. If a Max Burnham flies around, you're in big trouble. The truth is, a lot of those cards are hard to get, and I'm finding more and more that epics, you know, a, a lot of whales will come to me advice with maxed epics, but recommending ships with maxed epics is really different than recommending based on rares. And for the 20s, we're kind of focusing this on rares and basic unlocks of epics, like a basic Nero and a basic 5 of 10. And you also want to work on, like I said, getting those basic Kirks and everything by going through these recruit tokens. Whether you're Romulan, Klingon, or Federation, this is what you should be focusing on in the lower levels. And then when you hit about 26 to 27, then you can start focusing on getting your Saladin and working on that process, which, as you see here, is going to cost you right at 20,000 faction credits, which is not terribly expensive, especially if you're doing your Vidar every day, as I've recommended doing, so you're getting the faction credits needed to get to those ships. And that brings me to the Saladin. Really quick, I want to cover some Saladin loadouts because we've talked about him before. But Max Morale is beautiful on the Saladin. If you don't have Max Morale, which I know a lot of you don't, there's still officers to run. If you manage to get 
Harrison in the 20s. I've covered Harrison in other videos, but Harrison is an extremely good card. And let's see, I skipped by him real quick. Just to remind you of his ability and why it's so good on a Saladin, if I can remember where the heck he is. He's with Section 31. There he is. I don't have him on my main account, as you can see here. Sabotage. For the first round of combat, John Harrison ignores 60% of the opponent's shields. Now, remember, with him being Section 31, he actually has synergy with cards like Yuki. So you can run a full-on Yuki Marcus Harrison loadout, and man, oh man, are you going to get some nice little buffs. You get full synergy there and full shield stripping. So not only are you getting that bypass in round one, the shields are going down really quick, and that Saladin now has a very significant ability to strip ships and destroy them. We've talked about it before. A high-level Saladin can take down an Enterprise. But I wanted to go over, like I said, some basic crew loadouts here going over the Boar crew, basic PvP stuff. Remember your generalized PvE crews. Some basic stuff even for battleships, and this does not you know, carry all the different ones that we can have. Remember, in our officer trees, there's a lot of new officers out there, but focus on abilities of officers. I preach that all the time. It's not about having combat strength. It's not even always about having officer strength. It's about having the abilities of these officers. You know, cars like Chang don't even matter, but you get to officers like Krell, which is anti-Federation. Holy screen jack up Batman. Remember this one. This is where he starts to get really effective. Getting a Krell in America at 175% is very, very strong in this game for fighting Saladins because it's going to increase your damage against those ships. If you can survive those first couple rounds of a Saladin, you can really do some massive damage against them, and they don't have a lot of survivability on their own. So look at the actual abilities of the cards, and as always, hit me up on Discord or Facebook if you need help with officers and ships anywhere in the game. Comment down below. If you like this video, also hit that subscribe button to make sure you get notified every time I have a video and every time I'm here to help you get better at Star Trek Fleet Command and every other game because I've also been streaming Marvel Strike Force. Fun little game to do on the side. Where's my phone? Holy crap. Freak out moment. But I will see you all on the next one. Live long and prosper. Stay safe with the Space Cowboys. We love y'all. And uh, hit that join button. Support the channel. Appreciate it. An even better outro than the intro. Yeah! Woo!